Uh, so our next um, speaker is uh, equally internationally renowned. This is Professor Elijah Baer, who is a consultant electrophysiologist here at St George's. He is a former president of the Association of Inherited Cardiac Conditions, and he's current chair of the European Cardiac Arrhythmias Genetics Focus Group. Um, so welcome and thank you for joining us, Professor Baer. Thanks very much, Chris. Um, thanks for uh, to Rachel as well, and to, to Liam obviously for chairing, but thanks to Rachel for asking me to uh, to speak. I hope you can see my, my slides adequately. In fact, you're going to recognize a few of these because I think um, uh, you had a, a taster from Greg and then a, a fair dollop of it from Mary. Um, I'll be talking about the, the pathway in sudden cardiac death. Um, and really this relates to the NHS England and British Heart Foundation supported sudden cardiac death pilot that I'm going to tell you more about and show you a lot more detail. Um, we know that um, many families do get great attention from the ICC services following a sudden death and even have the opportunity for the um, uh, delivery of molecular autopsy. But we know that this is particularly patchy across the country um, and many families, possibly even the majority, are left at risk, sometimes uh, un unaware that there may be a genetic risk in their family, that there may be other family members at risk and that there's a cause that could be given or ascribed to the, the sudden death of their, um, of their loved one. Uh, and this is an important reason why stakeholders got together back in 2019 um, between the, the British Heart Foundation, the Chief Coroner, um, Cardiac Risk in the Young, NHS England, Genomics England, and the Royal College of Pathologists to initiate a, a, a process or a program, um, initially as a pilot that could then be rolled out to the whole of the NHS to provide a, 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 an NHS-wide toolkit for the delivery um, of services. And the reason for this, or the background to it, is as you've already heard um, from um, Greg and from um, others, is that the, there is a real need to personalise the management of families where there have been sudden unexpected deaths because of the potential for genetic causes and the opp opportunity to um, identify the cause and to diagnose and treat relevant areas subsequently. And there are three primary components to that pathway. One is pathology and cardiac pathology, delivery of post-mortem genetic testing, and the timely clinical and clinical familial evaluation, and to provide that comprehensive personalised medical management supported by pathology and genomics. As I've mentioned already, it is a, it is a heterogeneous provision across the country at this stage. And therefore, we require closer working between the NHS and the coronial services where sudden deaths are identified um, in order to ensure that that coverage is more equitable um, and um, serviceable and with a similar degree of comprehensive, uh, uh, comprehensive nature throughout. Uh, this opportunity also arose uh, because of two other developments um, that have helped to drive it. One is the development of the genomic medicine service with the genomic laboratory hubs. And then um, subsequent to that, in uh, 2021, the establishment of the Genetic Medical Services Alliances across England. Um, uh, and this has been placed as one of the four main transformational projects that are immediately deliverable uh, by the GMSAs. And uh, these are the GMSA regions. You've seen this uh, slide already. Uh, they are Southwest, Southeast, North Thames, Central and South, East, Northwest and Northeast and Yorkshire. So seven districts. Now, we originally for the pilot had um, five districts pinpointed, but this was uh, start. This kicked off in 2020 March. And so you'll recognize by uh, the date early March 2020 that we were about to go into a pandemic. And so the GMSA is launched after we had to, to pause the program. And this meant that we introduced, we introduced two new uh, two new sites um, based on those GMSA regions, North Thames and uh, Southwest. But basically, we've got one from each region now. 
Um, and the aims of the program overall are as follows, to increase the number of affected families um, who are assessed and, and get into the ICC services, and uh, that's to improve the processes between coroner's services, um, and that involves the senior coroner's officers and local specialist pathologists and a new or, or relatively new CADA, the uh, ICC coordinator, and increase the rate of tissue retention for the deceased family member. Um, and this is by uh, ensuring that appropriate uh, consent has been captured to retain, retain the sample under um, the appropriate uh, HTA guidelines, as human tissue authority guidelines. Um, and uh, as the pathologist who's going to be critical to flagging up uh, who the who um, should be undergoing this process because they will be making the diagnosis of a potential genetic heart disease. And furthermore, to improve the experience for the affected families, um, and that's ensuring prompt signposting to the ICC service and facilitating referral to the ICC service between the coronial officer and the ICC coordinators and to build up close working relationships and processes between them. These aims are then separated into different objectives, establishing consistent pathology referral practice, establishing routine tissue retention for histology and DNA extraction, establishing coronial and NHS communication pathways, establishing mechanisms for postmortem gene testing via the genomic laboratory hubs, ensuring appropriate transport of tissues for that point of view, developing a disseminated nationally applicable practice in the future using a toolkit, as I just said to you mentioned, as I, as I mentioned to you earlier, excuse me, and ensuring the engagement and input of patient support groups as well. Um, you've seen the program sites uh, already uh, mentioned. So we have Sheffield, Leicester, um, North London, South London, Bristol, Birmingham and Manchester. Um, and the lead GMSAs who are taking responsibility for the project on the GMSA level are the East and Southeast GMSAs. Um, so that's Richard Sandiford and Francis Elmsley, uh, who are the GMSA leads. The structure of the program is that there's a national oversight group co-chaired by Sue Hill um, and Nilesh Samani. Um, uh, and Sue Hill, who is uh, responsible for personalized medicine and genomic medicine and pathology services in NHS England. And Nilesh Samani, who's the, um, uh, the medical director of the British Heart Foundation. Uh, the National Steering Group reports into that, and I'm the chair of the National Steering Group. And there are representatives uh, from all the stakeholders in that National Steering Group, uh, in, uh, inputting uh, from uh, clinicians through to pathologists, uh, through to um, uh, allied healthcare professionals involved in the processes, and also uh, engagement from, um, uh, from uh, charitable groups. And you'll see that the regional project boards then feed into the national steering group and there's a representative of the lead from each of those. And there you'll see the Southeast and East GMSA leads there. You've seen the um, inclusion criteria. I'll just clarify them a little bit more um, from, uh, from uh, with regard to how Mary presented them. So these are all sudden unexpected death cases reported to the coroner. And these include cases where there may be a cardiac arrest where resuscitation has failed, uh, but there's been no recovery despite that initial successful resuscitation and that they may still be referred to the coroner because a cause may not be uh, suspected or understood. If there's a suspected cardiac genetic cause, then they'll be included, or if they're unexplained uh, despite full coronial expert autopsy and um, toxicological testing, and that's the SADS group that you've heard about already. So there, there's the anisotain death causes. Then you have cardiomyopathies as a group. And then you have uh, valvular disease and thoracic aneurysms and then other rarer disorders. The toxicology is required, particularly in cases of unascertained causes of death, where the, 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 the one needs to exclude the um, um, uh, all potential etiologies, including drugs of abuse and therapeutic drugs with uh, concerning side effects. In terms how, of how the, the process is going to work compared to current processes, I've got a high level presentation for you here and in a little bit more detail just to try and give you an idea of how carefully we are thinking about the processes. 
So we first of all have a coroner's case opened for following a, a sudden unexpected death. The post-mortem examination is carried out. And if a genetic cardiac condition is identified or suspected, or if it's unexplained and therefore should also be suspected, then that will be certified by the death certificate. But then it's really important now that the pathologist specifically flags up this issue to the coroner's officer. And this is a particular new step as part of the process, maybe present in some areas already, but this is going to be part of a, a formalized process or is part of a formalized process. And then the coroner's officer is required to capture consent to retain the tissue and signpost the family to the inherited cardiac condition service. Now, coroner's officers are very busy and stretched individuals, but we've had extremely positive feedback from them from the coroner officer training sessions that we've undertaken. Um, and they will and they have forms that we've adapted for them that will make this all easier and also resources to give to family members for information immediately. And uh, they will inform then the coroner's officer that the pathologist, uh, the coroner's officer will inform the pathologist that consent has been captured. Um, and uh, this is another uh, new part of the process. Uh, and the pathologist will then arrange tissue storage as per uh, the local guidelines. And the coroner's officer will send information to the ICC service, uh, assisting in the transfer of data that would then uh, allow the ICC service to contact the family. Um, uh, and that's our um, our process to ensure um, to ensure that appropriate cases are picked up and families are are, um, are are given the opportunity to do so. And this is a little bit more detail of how the cardiac pathology will work. This is an example from Leicester of the future pathway. So the autopsy is undertaken by the local pathologist, and there's evidence of underlying genetic cardiac condition, and there's no need for a second opinion from the St George's Specialist Service, and most of the sites will be relying on St George's for specialist cardiac pathology from Mary. Then the cardiac pathology is undertaken, and if a genetic cause is found, the autopsy report is issued with genetic cause texts to assist, to assist in, the in the flagging up of the case. Retention of consent is obtained, and if that does occur, then the DNA source and tissue is curried to the Regional Gen Genomics Laboratory Hub, and uh, the tissue received and logged for future access um, and DNA extraction as per HTA guidelines, but we should also be retaining the pathology tissue as part of the medical record. If, retent, if consent for re retention isn't obtained, then it'll have to be disposed of as per the family wishes because that has left the coronial jurisdiction because a cause has been identified. If a second opinion is required from St George's, then the uh, uh, pathology technician will prepare the heart and documentation for transportation to St George's and couriering with expert cardiac pathology undertaken. And if a genetic cause is found, the autopsy report with the genetic cause text attached to it to flag the case up. Uh, and if, recent, if consent is obtained for retention, um, then the St George's pathologist will notify the local site, site of uh, the need to store DNA um, for future extraction. And of course, again, if we have to, we'll have to dispose of the heart um, as per family wishes. So the hope here is that DNA samples will not have to come to St George's in the future, but stay at their local site. In terms of the role of the ICC service and the GLH, um, the retained practice in the, uh, in the ICC clinic is uh, as usual. Um, accepting referrals, undertaking clinical assessments, genetic counseling, obtaining consent for postmortem gene testing, multidisciplinary review and appropriate clinical management. Where we expect the pathway to introduce uh, additional practice is the ICC coordinator role being a new development for most of these services to routinely link with coroner's practice. And this will be their permanent role to support signposting of families, facilitate the referral of the families tracking and transport of retained tissues um, for the GLHs and to bring forward the genetic counseling and postmortem genetic testing to write to, to right to, to the start of the pathway. Apologies for the spelling mistake there. Um, so that the families can gain benefit of this immediately. So if one of those pathogenic or likely pathogenic variants are picked up as per Greg's presentation, that can be used immediately in the family rather than having to go through a prolonged clinical evaluation. Uh, we're also going to be capturing anonymized case data um, that will um, uh, feed into um, evaluation of the pilot and 
hopefully form the basis in the future of databasing of inherited cardiac conditions and support external evaluation of this pilot. Um, the GLHs, there'll be four that you should be aware of, the Manchester Foundation Trust, Oxford, Royal Brompton, and the North Bristol NHS Trust. And the GLH testing will be based upon eligibility criteria that I'll show you in a moment. Panel testing with WGS whole genome sequencing take undertaken in parallel so we can compare the two and considering trios for SADS where we look at the parents and the decedents simultaneously to see if that will add value as well and be implemented early on from uh, from uh, service research into service usage. Um, and uh, these are the uh, 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 indications for genetic testing as you uh, I think Mary showed that to you already. Basically one to 40 for SADS, one to 60 for structural heart disease and 40 to 60 for um, SADS if there are other factors that suggest likelihood um, of underlying genetic heart disease, other family history, for example, while over 60s um, if there are other extenuating circumstances. So we, we, we're not discouraging the storage of tissue in over 60s. Uh, we're just not immediately proceeding with genomic testing unless there are other reasons to do so. The current status of the project um, is that we've made a lot of progress since that uh, pandemic pause in April of last uh, of 2020. And in fact, um, as of January to March, uh, we have started um, the uh, kickoff and the program is now live with at least four of the senior coron coroners already having identified cases in their four sites. And they'll be starting to filter their way through to the coordinators and to the ICC services over the next uh, few weeks and months. And they're already, uh, we already know in Birmingham of four cases that have been signposted to the ICC service there. Uh, the BHF have provided a lot of program support, um, including consent forms, supporting uh, around genetic testing, uh, pathology protocol development, information for families, training for the coroner's offices, a central repository for all the information that will form the basis in the end for the toolkit, and supporting standardized capture. Uh, there's some important things that we think will come out of this in the longer term is the commissioning specialist cardiopathology in a routine fashion that allows it to be sustainable rather than reliant on uh, single centers of with uh, excellence of practice like Mary's. Um, and um, adopting this as part of ICC service specification, and this is evolving at the moment. So new service specification will also focus on sudden death families and pathology provision. And this will also imply a need to develop the workforce, in particular anatomical pathology technicians, ICC coordinators, and training for registrars, um, given that ICC training, um, ICC training appears to be relegated to the uh, post-CCT um, level, and also development of a national registry. Thanks for your attention, and I hope that's useful. Um, and happy to take any questions if you've got time for discussion. Thanks very Thanks much. Very That's about um, uh, how we are able to write the right, right questions, questions in the chat, chat. Um, um, particularly for the panel discussion. discussion. You know, bar bar and I think, and that, I think that was a yeah, uh, outline outlining processes, processes that are going to improve our evaluation of young sub-sub-death. So thank you very much for that. Thanks.